Can anyone remember? Um, Mr. Bang. Yeah. Um, who is followed by a verb and whom is followed by a noun. Thank you very much. That is exactly what I taught you. Okay, Shaden, I'm not really sure where you got the subject object from. Subjects and objects are both nouns, right? So no, that is incorrect to say that. Okay, subjects and objects are both nouns. But what Chloe said, thank you Chloe, is absolutely correct. Who is preceded by a verb. That means it's followed by a verb. Whereas whom is followed by a noun or a pronoun or any kind of noun basically. So let me give you an example. All right? Who is followed by, for example, who kicked. Ah, my spelling is horrible. Who kicked me. Mr. Pang, your screen froze again. Uh, okay, thank you. Right, I need to keep moving it. Sorry. Okay, I apologize. Right, so who kicked me? Right, kicked is... The verb, okay, who kicked me, right? And then whom I kicked, okay? And I is a pronoun or a noun that takes on the form of a pronoun. So a noun, pronoun, they're all the same family, okay? So verb or noun uh, is the easiest way to differentiate between who and whom. Whenever I'm not sure which one to use, I just look at the next word. If the next word, occurs as a verb, then I know it's who. If it's noun or pronoun, then it's whom, all right? And uh, let's see. Uh, okay. Uh, Ching Yi, can you tell me what do I use whose for? Whose? Here. What do I use whose for? Uh. Go ahead. To indicate possession? Yes, exactly. It's right there, right? Okay. So what does indicate possession mean, Ching Yi? Can you simplify it for us so that we understand more easily? Oh. Uh, to indicate... Um, uh, To indicate who be who uh, to indicate who Okay, hold on Chingy. Uh Charlene, go ahead. Make sure that you hold something. Sorry, again. Uh, make sure that you own something. Yeah, so it shows belonging. Thank you, Charlene. Belonging or ownership, right? And thank you for raising your hand, Charlene. Appreciate it. And I noticed it. Okay, so it's basically different from who and whom, right? When I'm using who, I'm referring to an action that is attributed to a person. When I'm re using whom, I'm referring to a subject or a noun that I'm referring to. When I'm using whose, I'm referring to a subject or an object that belongs to or is owned by me. Okay, so the idea about belonging is what separates whose from who and whom. All right, so let's now go into some of these examples. Okay, so take a look at question number one. All right, um, Xavier, can you form a sentence using um, who, whose, or whom for question number one? Think about it. Jack Sif, can you form a sentence using who, whose, or whom for question number two? Think about it. Uh, and for question three, can I have Reese um, try question number three? Use who, whose, or whom to form a sentence that fits into the blank. Okay, so Xavier, Jackson, and Reese. Questions one, two, and three. The rest of us, I want you to think of, a, of an answer and compare it with the answer that the three boys are about to give to us. Okay, so I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. Who, whose, or whom? Right, you can construct it. Actually, right, I give you another hint. Huh? The three boys who are doing it as well as for the rest of us. You can use 
any of the three relative clauses. Okay? Any of the three can fit, right? But you must construct the relative clauses correctly, all right? In order to fit into these sentences, okay? Xavier, are you ready with your answer or do you need a bit more time? Let me know. Uh, I still can't think of a sentence. Sorry? Do you I need still more need time? more time. Yeah, okay. Please go ahead. Um, Jaxis, are you ready? Yes. Okay, Jaxis, why don't you give us your answer first? The bank officer? The bank officer, who was mostly careless, has managed to balance the accounts for the day. Uh, no. I won't accept that because the carelessness has nothing to do with the fact that he balanced the accounts for the day. Can you come up with a sentence that is related? Remember, relative clause, your answer must be related to the rest of the sentence. There must be a relationship. So if you manage to balance the account for the day, then what does that make you? Right? How, how would you describe this person who manages to do it uh, and complete it well? Okay, so I give you a bit more time to think about it. Okay. Um, Reese, are you ready with question number three? Not yet. Okay, Xavier, back to you. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Try. Mark, who failed his recent test, has been very conscious in his schoolwork. Okay, very good. But the word is conscientious. Not conscious. Conscientious. This word, please highlight. Can you all see me highlighting? Very good. This word means uh, extremely hardworking. Okay, and uh, yes, Xavier, your sentence is related to the rest of, you know, your clause is related to the rest of the sentence, so I agree. Mark, who failed his recent test. Okay, very good. So because he failed his recent test, he has been very hardworking, right? So he wants to improve. Yes, there is relationship between Xavier's sentence and the rest of the sentence. So yes, very good. Well done. This relative clause passes. And please take note that this is a verb, right? Notice, fail is a verb that comes after the connector who. Very well done, Xavier. Good job. Okay. Um, Jackson, are you ready with your adjusted answer for question two? I still need some time. Okay, then let me skip over to question number three. Uh, Reese, are you ready? Um, I yeah. yeah. Just give it a try. Go ahead. The uh, the students who are lazy have been applying for work attachment since the start of the year. Oh no, it's not correct because the laziness does not tie in with applying since the. If you are applying since the start of the year, you are not lazy, right, Reese? It's quite the opposite, right? If you've been doing it since the beginning of the year, that would make you. Quite the opposite of being lazy. What's, what's the opposite of being lazy, Reese? Hardworking. Yeah, okay. So the polytechnic students who, all right, so let me just adjust Reese's answer because I have no time, who are very hardworking. Okay, and you, you can even use the word conscientious, right? You can borrow it from question number one, right? The polytechnic students who are very conscientious, right? If you want to, you can use the word conscientious because remember, we talked about the fact that they are very hardworking, very responsible, have been applying for work attachments since the start of the year. Okay, so this makes sense, right? Because they are so hardworking, they've been applying and applying and applying and applying again and again and again. So that fits with my uh, sentence entirely. So good job there, all right? Okay, excellent. Let's move on. Okay, question number two. Uh, can I come back to Jaxif? Please give us your answer to question number two. The bank officer who was very careful has managed to balance the accounts for the day. Okay, uh, very good. But I'm going to change it to who is very careful instead of who was very careful because that is his nature, his character. It's a statement of fact, okay? Who is very careful who is very careful, right? And again, here, notice is and are are verbs. They are be verbs, right? Is, are, was, were, these are being verbs, okay? So verbs come after the connector who all the time, very consistently, okay? So well done to the three of you. 
uh, with some help, you've managed to do it. The rest of you, I hope you kind of get the idea about how to form relative clauses, who, whom, or whose. Now, the next three, I'm going to give you some limitations, okay? So, Megan, go. Can you try question number four? All right. Chun Hong, can you try question number five? All right. And Alison, can you try question number... No, actually, Alison, try number five. Okay. All right. And uh, Chun Hong, try question number six. Okay. So, Megan, four. Ali, five. And Chun Hong, six. Okay. Right. I'll give you a minute to take a look at it. The rest of you also look oh, at it. Where's the six? Where's Sorry? The six? Where's the question six? There is no oh, question six. Oh, there's, there's no question, question six. six. Oh, question no. Six. Okay, six. never mind. Then, uh, Chun Hong, you wait until the next exercise, okay? So I'll just have Megan and Ellie doing question four and five. Uh, and can I please have you use the connector? Okay, so Megan, I want you uh, to use the connector whose? Whose, okay? And then, um, Ellie, use the connector whom? Whom, okay? Ellie, you got a bit more difficult one, huh? Okay, I'll give you some time. The rest of you, think about what you could possibly form using these different connectors. You can actually even use who, whose, or whom for all of these questions, right? But I want some variety, so I'm giving them slightly different uh, questions, okay? So think about it. It's okay if you get it wrong. I will correct you if you need some help. Siti, can you please turn on your camera? I know that it's faulty, but turn it on. Jaden Teo, turn on your camera, please. Do not turn it off for any reason during this live stream, please. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Jaden Teo, please turn on your camera or I will eject you from this live stream in five. Thank you. And keep it on at all times. Thank you very much. That's the condition for being on this live stream. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let's see. Megan, are you ready? Megan. Yes. Okay, go for it. The canteen vendors whose family was poor were not very happy when they were, were told about the increase in the rental of their stores. Perfect. I like the fact that you linked poor to the increase in the rental because increased rental means more money paid out, but you made a mistake, right? Look at this here. How many vendor am I talking about? One or many, Megan? More than one. More than one. So is it family or families? Families. Ah, so be very careful. Huh? Your subject and your object must agree in number. Huh? So in this case, the canteen vendors whose families were poor. Can I use uh, poor? Yes, because I can also make a statement of fact that their families have been poor and will continue to be poor. Right, so it's a statement of fact. But in this case, I use past tense because I want to be consistent with the rest of the sentence and there's nothing limiting me. So I can use past or present tense. So the canteen vendors whose families were poor were not very happy when they were told about the increase in the rental of their stalls. Very easy, very straightforward. Good job there. Megan, thank you very much for linking that to the poverty. Good job. Okay, Ellie, let's move on to question five. This is a bit more challenging. Are you ready? Alison, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, go for it. Try. The architect whom the property, property company thought was really pushy managed to secure high profit when he signed a contract with the property company. Okay, very good. Yes, actually perfectly correct, but a bit long. Uh. Can you shorten it? Uh? I uh, completely correct, but I, I need a shorter version so I don't have to write so long. Instead of the property company, can you shorten it to a pronoun? Okay, never mind. I will do it for you. The architect whom I thought, I, me, whom I thought was 
very cushy. Okay. Uh, Jared, can you tell me what is the meaning of cushy? Jared, can you I'm not, tell I, I'm, me? I'm not really sure. Then say so. Thank you. Right. Uh, can I have somebody else? Who knows what's the meaning of pushy? Eh, 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 eh. Zla, do you know the meaning of pushy? Do you know the meaning of pushy zla? I cannot hear you. Do you know the meaning of pushy? Uh, no. Okay. Does anybody know the meaning of pushy? The word that Alison. Okay, Oscar, go ahead. Unmute yourself before answering, please. Pushy means excessively or unpleasantly self-assertive or ambitious. Uh, no, not in this context, but thank you very much. Can someone else try? It's not ambition here. It's not being ambitious. In this context, that's not how the word is used. When I'm being very pushy, what am I trying to do here? Anybody? Uh, Xavier? She means like very persistent. Persistent. Thank you very much. That is exactly what I was looking for. Let me change a different ink so you all can see more clearly. Right? So pushy in this case means to be very persistent. And to be persistent to the point where people think you are annoying. Do you understand? So this is not a good word. Please do not use this word to describe uh, people in a positive sense. Please don't say my parents are very pushy. Okay, that will be negative. All right? You would say something like, the salesperson is very pushy, right? Because he keeps on trying to get you to buy something, even though you don't want to or are not interested, right? Have you ever been to shops where the assistant just continuously follows you around the shop and keeps on asking you whether you want to buy something? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you all don't enjoy that feeling, right? Sometimes you wish you could just be left alone to do your own shopping, right? And that is what it means to be pushy, got it? Right, so thank you for using that good word, Alison. Let's move on now to the next page, page seven. Okay, uh, this one very easy. Lah, huh? Okay, so can you all go ahead now uh, and just spend one minute highlighting all the words that come after the connectors. Okay, so I give you an example, okay? Like this, all right? Like this, okay? Can you all go ahead and highlight all the words that come after the connector. All right, everybody do that now. Very easy, just highlight the words. That's all one word. Highlight all the words that come after the connector all the way down to question 15, okay? All the way down to question 15. Okay, I'm gonna do it along with you. Okay, uh, so now let me just uh, randomly assign the index numbers. Okay, so this one I want 23, this one I want 13, this one I want 7, this one I want uh, 14, this one I want 21, this one I want 25. Okay, when you are ready, please. Uh, go ahead and chime in with your answer by telling me what question number and what answer. Okay. Unmute yourself, go ahead. Question number two, who? Yeah. Question number two. Okay, very good. Thank you. Question number 
uh, who's. Thank you. Perfectly correct. Question number one, who? Very good. Thank you. Who is index number 21? Question number five. Yep. What is it? Who? Thank you. Very good. Um, Question number six. Who? Sorry, what? Question number six, who? Question number six, who? Right, who left the... Um, Oven on, thank you. Uh, Kaylin? Mr. Pang, the, the, your screen froze again. Oh, okay, sure. Thank you. Well, I'm doing that, Kaylin. Can you please tell us your answer? Hey, sorry? Hey, um, sorry, can you repeat that? I can't hear you. Kaylin, question number four, can you tell us what's the answer? Who? Who, thank you. Right, excellent. Right, let's move on. Okay, quite easy, right? Everybody kind of got the hang of it. So uh, do me a favor, as you are doing so, please link your answer to the word, okay? Just so that you can see the pattern that follows most of the time, who will be linked to a verb, all right? Okay, let's move on to question number seven and onwards. Okay, am I going too fast? No, right? Everybody is quite all right. Okay. Okay, um, let's see. Um, did I? Okay, very good. Okay, index number three, index number 15, index number 18, 19. Mr. Pang, nothing showing up on your screen. Oh, sorry? Oh, there is. Can see the numbers. I, I cannot see. There oh, wait, is. never mind. Okay, right. Number 10. Number 10. Yep, which Question one? 7. Who's? 7. Who's? Question 10. 10? Okay, 10. Who's? Who's also? 11. Okay, sorry about that. Yes, okay, carry on. What else? Question 11. Yep. Whom? Hmm. Hmm. Sorry, who? Question number nine, who? Number Question nine. number 12, who? Question number 12, who? Question number 8, who's? Okay. All right. Very good. Thank you. Okay, hold on. Mr. Pang, mm -hmm. I have tuition at 2.40. Can I leave now? Yes, you may. Go ahead. All right, okay, let's move on. Okay, I think everybody has answered already. Okay, let's go on to question 13. Okay, let's see. 
Okay, um, can you all just chime in? Whoever has an answer, just chime in. Question 13. Question 13, whom? Thank you. Okay, question 14. Who? 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 Right, thank you. Verb, noun, okay, excellent. Question 15. Who's? 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 Mm. Right, belongs to him, right? The scientific research, very good, well done. Okay, I'll give a bit of time for you all to consolidate your answers. Okay, then let's move on to the next one. Now, um, section B, right? We are supposed to combine the two sentences, two relative clauses with a connector, right? Are you all ready? Uh, Mr. Bang, yes. why is question 11, who, not whom? Okay, hold on. Let's move back to question 11. Ah, uh, yes. You notice that I marked it with a star, right? Okay. Uh, this is because when I'm talking about I know exactly who I am going to support in this case, who is not acting as a connector. Can anyone tell me in this case, in this situation, who is not acting as a connector, what is who acting as? Going. Sorry? Going. Who is this? Deya. Deya. Ah, okay, Deya, sorry, say that again. Going. No, no, what is who acting as? Who is not acting as a connector, right? No. What kind of a word is who no. acting as? Hmm? Noun. Joseph? Noun. Ah. Are you sure it's no, a noun? No, no, Xavier. Xavier, are you sure it's a noun? Pronoun. You are, you are right, you are right. You are absolutely right. It's a noun, but are you sure or not? And why do you think it's a noun? Are you guessing or do you know? That's my question. Uh, um, I'm not guessing. Okay, you're not guessing. Okay, can you explain to me why it's a noun? You're right, but can you tell me why it's a noun? Because I know exactly who. So the who is referring to the person. Which yes, is what noun. do I know, right? What do I know, right? Or who do I know? I know who. Okay, so here, right, this is the verb. Verb, adverb, right? Exactly is the adverb describing the no. And this verb is applying to this. This is actually the object. This is the subject. Okay, I is the subject. I know you. I know who. So here, who is not a connector? Who is acting as a noun. Therefore, this part no longer applies to this part. Do you all understand? Question 11 is an exception. Okay, it is a trick question. All right, thank you. I was going to explain this after we finish the next page, but I'll do it now. Please copy this down, right? This is an exception. Mr. Are... Bang, your screen froze. Oh, again? Again. Sorry, sorry. I apologize. Okay. So uh, let me just uh, explain to you uh, why it is that this happens and it will happen sometimes to trick you. All right. Now, there are cases where who and whom and whose do not act as connectors. All right. They act as nouns. Okay. Very rarely, but this does happen. This is considered an exception question. Right. So I know exactly who or I know who I'm going to support in the upcoming election. Um, why is it who and not whom? Because who, in this case, no longer functions as a connector. Right? I know who. In fact, I can even use I know whom I'm going to support. Right? So who and whom can both fit into this answer. However, it's not because they are connectors. It's because they are both functioning as nouns. Okay? I know who, I know whom depending on whether it's direct or it's indirect, okay? But don't worry about that. Just know that this is an exception. It's a trick question, okay? Who and whom are not functioning as connectors, okay? Ken, any more questions? Please take it offline because I got to finish this, all right? I want to finish up to page eight today. That is our, our goal, all right? It's 2.45. Any more questions? Stay behind, can ask me. Move on, all right? And I think we can comfortably finish it today, uh, up to page eight. Okay, so... We bought a car last week. The car is blue. 
all right? Um, the car, uh, please take note here, I cannot use who, whom, or whose anymore. Am I right? Can I use who, whom, or whose? Cannot. It doesn't work anymore. So what other relative pronoun can I use other than who, whom, or whose? I'm left who, whom, whose behind again. Chloe? Which. Yeah, thank you. So the car, which. Can you think of another connector besides which, Jin Xian? Yeah. Yeah. Now, Mr. Pang, yes. it's which we bought, not I oh, I'm bought. sorry, I'm sorry. Yes, thank you for that. Now, uh, can you all tell me, right? Uh, I'm sorry, it's, uh, it's rather squeezy, but you know what I'm trying to do. Thank you. Can you all tell me what could I do uh, to change this sentence into an A positive form? Can you still remember A positive? What's A positive? Right, how can I change this sentence into an A positive? This is to... Check. Okay, Charlene, go ahead since you raised your hand first. Uh, the car, comma, which is blue. Wait, sorry. The car, comma, which we bought last week, comma, is blue. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. So this is actually a sentence that is A positive disguised because I took out the commas. Thank you, Charlene. Right. So if I insert the two commas, I realize that this is an A positive sentence. Then, right, if this is an A-positive sentence, which is the subject of the sentence? Megan, go. Which is the subject? The car. Yeah, very good. The car is the subject. So, subject is singular. I can ignore everything in between the brackets. I can ignore. This is additional information. So, this is just a revision of A-positive. In case you have forgotten what's A-positive, it's two commas that act like brackets that insert additional information that do not change the subject, right? They just add information to the subject. I can ignore them when I'm doing subject verb agreement. That's why is it's blue, right? It doesn't matter what comes in between. It's always is because there's only one car. Okay, the rest, I'm not going to go into so much detail already. Okay, question number two. Uh, let's have someone, uh, okay. Uh, mm, mm, mm. Joseph, can you give me the answer to question number two, please? The bananas, which huh? number two, or, la, not the uh, number three, la, number two. No bananas. Yeah, go ahead. Sugar, yep. Which we met at wrong. the party. Wrong, 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 wrong. The girl uh, is, is, is the girl an object or a person? A person. Do you use which or that with persons? Are no. you saying the girl is an object? No, uh, do not objectify people. Uh. Okay, so change again. Try again. The girl who we met at the party is a singer. Very good. Okay, so I take out the her, right? Because it's repeated. Okay, and whom? Correctly pointed out by Joseph, thank you, because we met, right? So it's a pronoun that comes after the connector. Therefore, it is very clearly whom. Okay, very good. Well done, Joseph. Good job there. In spite of the bananas and in spite of the fact that you made the girl a thing. But now you have done well. Okay, uh, number three, Joyce, do the banana one. Yeah, um... The bananas that are on the table, that are on the table. <laughs> no. The Don't bananas that, that are bought by George are yes. on the table. Yes. Yes. Okay. So over here, right, bought by George. What have I just done here? George bought them, I changed to bought by George. What have I done here? Ziming, Ziming, 
What? Can you tell Mr. Pang what I just did? I taught you this before. I changed from George bought them. Um, to, and, sorry? Active to passive voice. Wonderful. I clap for you, Zuming. Good job. Okay, exactly. You change from active to passive when you are changing the subject to the object. Okay, so this actually is a lot of revision of all the previous things that Mr. Fang has taught you. Thank you, Zuming, for remembering. I change active, George, and then I change to passive. George becomes the object, the bananas become the subject. Okay, so I'm changing the position of the object and subject. I am doing active to passive. Wonderful. If I change the object into the subject, the other way around. Okay, so active to passive, I can also change from passive back to active again. All right, so good job, Zeming. Well done. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, let's see how many more we have to go. Okay, uh, let's stop at question eight today. Lah, huh? uh, page eight today. Lah. Okay, question number four. Who would like to volunteer? We are doing good time. Anybody? Volunteer? Raise your hand. Ah, yeah. Is Charlene the only one who can raise her hand? Ah? Why nobody else raise hands? Ah? Okay, no, I mean like the actual raise hands function. Ah. Okay. Uh, okay, wait, Megan Quack. Where are you, Megan Quack? Megan Quack. Megan Quack. Brandon, can you turn on your camera for goodness sake? 100 million times. Turn it on. Where are you, Megan Quack? Um, the film that we watched last night was really scary. Okay, very good. The film that, oops, sorry, uh, has my, oh, okay, no, it hasn't frozen. Very good, well done. Okay, the film that we watched last night was really scary. Okay, so I cancel the it, right? Because it's repeated. Okay, and then I add on the connector that, that, whom. Okay, so these are the connectors we are using. Excellent. Question number five. Uh, can I have, uh, let's see. These are the people I've caught on before. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Okay, uh, Cheryl, can I have you try question number five, please? The new words that I have to learn are very difficult. Yes, very good. Perfect. Thank you. The new word's that, right? Okay. That I have to learn are very difficult. Okay. Easy peasy. Lemon very uh, squeezy. Mr. Pang? Yeah? Is there an alternative answer for question five? Actually, there are right. alternative answers for all of them, but they are more difficult. But go ahead. Go ahead. The new words that I am learning are very difficult. Oh, no, 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 no. Cannot. Cannot. I was expecting you to say the new words that are very difficult have to be learned by me. Right? That's active passive and it's a lot more complicated, but it's correct. This one, the new words that I, uh, what? That I am learning, is it? Uh, that I am learning are very difficult is wrong. Can anyone tell me why it is wrong? Change the tenses. Is it because ah. he's not learning? Wait, 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 stop, 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 stop. Too many people talking at the same time. Okay, hold on. Uh. Uh, Shaden, I think I heard Shaden's voice. Shaden, carry on. Uh, is it because he's not learning yet? He says that he has to learn, but he's not learning yet. Yeah, very good. So, have to learn versus am learning is different, right? Correct? I have to learn means in the future is something I need to do. Am learning means right now I am in the process of learning. So what synthesis rule has been broken? Meaning. Yeah. Tense. Rule number one has been broken. And rule number two has been broken. Correct or not? The meaning has changed. And the tense has changed also. Can you all see? So I have broken two of the three bigger synthesis rules. Therefore, it's wrong. Cannot change the meaning. Cannot change the tense. Okay? So therefore, no. Cannot say I am learning. Wrong, wrong, wrong. So can you go ahead and put a big cross and put am learning? So just to, uh oh, it froze again, right? Okay, hold on. When I talk for too long, it's a signal that the screen is going to freeze. And I cannot talk while moving the screen all the time. Very difficult. Okay. 
Okay, there you go. Okay, right. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, so, oh, sorry. Okay, right, yes. So M learning, very wrong because synthesis rule number one and two tell me that it is against the law to do so, okay? Question number six and seven, and then we are done for today. Okay, excellent. Uh, Madhu, can you try question number six, please? Madhu, question number six, please. Mm. The film which I watched a couple of nights ago was engaging. Very good. Perfect answer. Thank you very much. Okay. Which or that, okay, both are acceptable. Mr. Pang, yep. I have an alternate answer. Go for it. Can I put the film that was engaging was watched by me a couple a couple of night a couple of nights ago? Yes, but needlessly complicated. Okay, I do not want to change from active to passive voice. The meaning remains the same. The tense remains the same. Yes, I will accept that as an alternative answer. But it is needlessly complicated. Do you understand what I'm saying, Chloe? Right. It is a simpler and more direct answer to say the film, the film which I watched a couple of nights ago, was engaging. All right. So always strive for simplicity because complexity means more potential mistakes that you can make. The longer and more complex your answer is, the more errors you are likely to make. So keep your answers simple to the point answering the question is what I would say. Yes, yeah, Charlene, you raise your hand. Charlene, you raise your hand. No? Okay. Cheryl, you raise your hand. No, okay. You got to turn you got to turn off the raise hand function because I still see the icon uh, on my screen when I look at you. Okay. Uh, right. Brandon, can you turn on your screen? Because uh, I'm this close to having to call your parents to talk to them about your screen being off all the time uh, and complaining very, very, very vehemently. Uh. Please don't make me do that. Right? If every single time I have to keep on repeating myself, I'm just going to not repeat myself anymore and go directly to your parents and complain to them directly. I think that would be most effective, right? Rather than having to always belabor the point with you and then spoil the mood of the class. Okay? Right. Question seven. Last question. John, can you do this, please? Go ahead. Yeah, I saw your raised hand. Go ahead. The man whom Kali is helping is my teacher. Yes. Okay, perfect. All right. I'm sorry, it froze again, but you heard the answer. Okay. So now, right, uh, let me just give you a few uh, quick instructions before I dismiss all of you because it's almost three o'clock already and I don't want to keep you past three. Okay. Um, for those of you who didn't catch the last answer, here it is again. Sorry about that. Okay. The man whom Kali is helping uh, is my teacher. Okay. <coughs> well done. Yes. Somebody? Mm. Did anybody uh, want to say something? No? Okay, excellent. All right, excellent. Mr. Yep. Kang, on our booklet is actually page 7 that we are doing. Oh, okay. So we actually did page 5, 6, 7 instead of 6, 7, 8, is it? Correct, yes. huh? Okay, all right. That, that's fine. It's all right, okay? Anyways, uh, in that case, let me just dial the page number back, right? So your assignment for today, very simple. Same thing. Can you complete all of this? So the next page. So I think this is page eight for you. This next page, page eight. Can you please do page eight? All right. All the way to the end. Okay. I think that's page eight. That's it. Okay. So just complete page eight until question 14. All right. Can you all do that? Just one page. Do it like by the end of today. Then give me a cam scan picture of this page. Just this page. I don't need the earlier pages that I went through with you. I just need this page that you will do. Can you send this page to me by the end of today? Are you able to do that? Okay, cam scan just this one page to me, page eight for you lah. Page nine for me, page eight for you, and send it to me by the end of today. All right, that's your kind of little bit of homework. Then tomorrow, we are having debate. Okay, so at two o'clock, we will log on to this channel on Zoom. We will have the debate. Then after debate, uh, we will have the remainder of these last few pages that we will complete together as a class. 
Okay, so please have your Unit 4 booklets ready. Tomorrow, Joyce's team will be um, versusing... Um, whose team is Joyce's team against? Xavier's team. Ah, okay. Yes, that's right. Okay, thank you. Xavier, John, and Jaden Sim. Uh, they are the team that's going to be against Joyce's team. So tomorrow, uh, tune in 2 o'clock, right? Uh, for the debate. Uh, please help me to also vote and decide on your best speakers that like we did for the last week. Okay, so I'm looking forward to the debate. Then the following Monday on the 4th of May will be our final round of debates, okay, for the remaining teams. Okay, so there are four teams debating next week. Uh, it'll be quite exciting, right? So next week will be a slightly longer session. I'll announce the timing uh, tomorrow after our next round of debate. Okay, Ken? So I repeat again, uh, please send me the screen capture, cam scan of page 8 of your Unit 4 booklet. That's all you need to do for today. Those of you who still owe me your Synthesis Worksheet 4 to 6, scan, send to me. Synthesis Worksheet 1 to 3, scan, send to me. Right? Please send those scans to me by today or I will have to call and ask your parents. It's not very nice. Please don't make me trouble them. They are working from home. Be responsible for your own work. If you cannot send it to me, because of technical issues, problems, please let me know and I will give you more time. I'm very reasonable. Once you give me a message, I will allow you to extend the deadline. But please don't tell me last minute, okay? That's usually the way I do things. Right, any questions? Right, if not, those of you who wish to stay back with your parents' permission to discuss the debate, right, may do so. Otherwise, the rest of you may leave the chat. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. Good job, everybody. Goodbye. Bye bye. Go ahead. If you need to leave, please leave. Mr. Pang? Yeah. We email or WhatsApp you? Uh, you're talking about the scan, is it? Yeah. Email. Cam scanner is always email. Uh, email, email. Yeah.